Piece together from fragmentary evidence, I've been able to reconstruct the evolution of silverware. You can see these two knives, these two spoons here. Obviously, one's been uh, subjected to more geologic pressure and has squished it out a little deeper than the other. I believe knives slowly turned into spoons over millions of years, and then gradually erosion cut grooves into the end and turned them into short time forks. Then, very slowly, of course, takes a long time. These forks got, you know, the grooves got deeper and longer. I knew I had the right order. You can obviously tell that, but I just felt like I had a missing link. One day, I was flying to Connecticut on U.S. Air, and the stewardess handed me the missing link. I don't think she knew what she had, but my trained scientific eye caught it right away. Later, I went to Popeye's Chicken. I now have two. <laughs> so, the evolution of silverware is nearly complete. Of course, many mutants didn't survive over the years. And once people realized I was doing studies on the evolution of the fork, they started sending me research, hoping to become famous, you know. Um, and people, people get desperate for fame in this field. This is a cutthroat business, okay? Somebody, we're hoping for fame and fortune. They sent me an obvious fraud. This is a fork head on a spoon handle. <laughs> I caught it right away. I said, no, nah, I'm sorry. This is unacceptable. This is a fraud, okay? Of course, how the race has evolved is still a question we're studying. But uh, you should teach the kids we observe animals producing the same kind of animals. We don't know how they got to this planet. But I'm telling you, the textbooks at Antelope Valley College do not teach evolution as a theory. They teach evolution as a fact. They do, that's true. And it shouldn't be done that way. Stop doing that. So teach kids. Dogs produce dogs. Teach the kids. If you teach biology, teach all the muscles, the bones, the nerves that were, were amazingly designed. Stop telling them this is adapted to their environment. Start telling them it's probably designed for their environment. If the kid says, who's the designer? Say, I don't know. We're not here to talk about that. I don't know if it's Allah or Buddha or Jehovah or a mysterious process. We don't know yet. All I know is it looks like it's designed. So are you saying that I, that I can't try to say anything at all about the origin of living things? I mean, sci one of science's greatest quests, whether it be astronomy, where did stars and galaxies come from, uh, geology, one of science's greatest quests is to explain the origins of things. That's a fascinating question. Right. This stuff's here? How did it get here? You'd have to be, you'd have to have concrete in your brain to not wonder that. Okay, and that's, so, sci one of the, the greatest goals of science is to explain the origins of things. So what do I say positively about origins? I would say that would raise several major questions. I don't think science can handle the subject of origins. It's not part of science. We observe dogs producing dogs. How the original dog get here is outside the realm of science. Don't discuss it. No matter what you say about origins, either side is going to upset somebody. If you talk the creation view, you're going to upset the evolutionist. If you talk the evolution view, you're going to upset the creationist. The subject cannot be discussed in a taxpayer-funded school without alienating somebody. It's unnecessary to biology. You could teach all about the anatomy of frogs and hamsters and, and humans and whales without ever getting into origins. Why waste time on it? There's so much to learn. To, if we want students to be good doctors someday, they need to learn the biology. The origins has nothing to do with it. There isn't a doctor on this planet that does surgery on people that his, sub, his study of origins has anything to do with this surgery on these people. It has nothing to do with it. Okay. So... It raises, it raises a much bigger question of should we even have public schools because there are getting into the origin subject. Maybe everybody should just go to privately funded schools. The Muslims can teach what they believe. The Catholics can teach what they believe. The Baptists teach what they believe. And then strict competition. The better doctors would win out the jobs. It wouldn't matter. I'm telling you, the subject of evolution is unnecessary. It's counterproductive. It's a waste of time. And it's, it's, not, it's not science. It's, why is it included? I think you should simply, as kids, I'm going to teach you biology. You probably know an enormous amount of biology about the nervous system, about the circulatory system, the lymphatic system, the, all the systems of the body. Teach it. Leave the origins out of it. Contrary to what some of my students say, about 85% of what I teach in my general biology course is not evolution. I get accused all the time, oh, Dr. Rainbow, that's all he ever teaches is evolution. That is complete poppy cup. You look, you look at my syllabus. I'm teaching them about DNA and RNA and proteins. And uh, That's good. so I do. You, you asked what I thought you should do. I would leave out the other 15% then and make 100% biology. Just teach biology.